Uh, so what does that mean? We, we, we start from very early to be who God has ordained us to be. And by the way, from the outset, I want to declare that I'm a born again Christian. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, having said so, I, 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 I think at that point in time, the reason why my grandmother and my pictures, um, be that as it may, the other reason is because they themselves, my grandmother, my, gran my, my mother, and other people in the village, used to be farm hands at the, at the, at the, at the garden or the farm. Of the, of the local member of parliament. So how could a child born different then become like that member of parliament? That, that, that member of parliament, the father was a paramount chief. And so he had an advantage, uh, you know, uh, that his father was a paramount chief. So he w went to the best of schools and eventually became a member of parliament. In fact, he was, there was a lay names or mentioned them to the teacher. She wouldn't fraud her name. And in my little mind, I wondered, how, did, how does this happen? It's unfair. It's injustice. Because the biggest noise maker is also the one who is reporting others. <laughs> so at five years, I devised a strategy. We used to play uh, you know, with bean bags. We used to use them uh, to know how to count building blocks and water view and other toys. Now, one of the things that we needed to do is to put them together neatly after having used them. And then... Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so if then you, you, you litter the classroom, then you are in bad books with the teacher. So what did I do? I placed these, um, these uh, toys and word of view and video blocks on the table. And I had, I had, a, I had a, a predicted, the girl came and they were all over the classroom. She messed up the whole place. Then I took the other, student, the other pupils we started shouting, the class is dirty, oh, it's very untapped, and what have you, we made a lot of noise. You know how little children can be loud. Mm -hmm. And then the teacher came, what is the problem? We said, the problem is this Nelly Modoni. And she was removed, and I was made the prefect. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first coup d'etat. But it actually shows that, um, that sense of justice, which is what has made you to come here today. A journey of leadership is about a love for the people, but it's not an easy journey. So you will see me, for example, uh, you know, doing poems and standing out when I was in uh, grade two, appearing on TV, doing drama, all of that, being the best uh, KCP student in my school, that is the primary school exams for those who are not from Kenya, and then uh, even being the best in public speaking in Kiswahili uh, for, uh, for primary schools in the year 1996. Uh, being admitted to go to Starehe, but then not being taken in because Griffin School didn't accept injured kids or ch children who are different, because he told me that personally later on. And then going to a special secondary school, but being fortunate enough to rise to also become uh, uh, the school captain and also the Christian Union chairman, which is difficult because you are head of church and, and, uh, and uh, society, if you like. And then joining into, you know, like community youth service, joining the university, becoming a class secretary in first year, being elected together with Abraham here uh, to be student leaders uh, when I was still a first year myself. Abraham was in second year. Um, I was the only first year actually elected out of uh, seven slots. Uh, the other one is uh, Gladys Wanga, you know her? Yeah. yeah, she's a governor now of Homa Bay. She was in our team of leaders, secretary general. Um, and was our vice president, and uh, we have our executive of seven elected, and then uh, holding holding uh, the portfolio uh, of uh, you know uh, constitutional affairs and transport for students, uh, uh, engineering the first constitution of students under Kusa Constitution. Uh, in fact, Arms used to call me Soku because there was another draft called Soku. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Soku, and then eventually joining, uh, being very fortunate. Um, uh, uh, got my first uh, government appointment when I was a student, by the way. Mm -hmm. I was a board member, or board director, if you like, of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities at the age of 22 years. So that's how I joined uh, government, 2004-2007, uh, uh, going to represent in terms of the way you are vocal and you're here, uh, being called to 
panels and meetings in other the country, Addis Ababa, uh, you know, the AU, Uganda, uh, uh, at the UN actually, uh, and all of that uh, in Norway, and eventually joining politics in 2006. I'm giving you this story because you want to be in politics. It's true that in your journey of politics, you will also have your own failures. For example, Arms, after being vice president, ran for president. <laughs> and we received the sad news of our loss in my room. So the, the returning, uh, the returning center. <laughs> and then I was the next candidate. I also ran for president. Uh, Arms was, came second, a very commendable second. Um, um, and he was running against a friend, by the way, uh, Charles Wafula. And then I was, then became the, the, the next candidate. Because politics, you know, in the universities, they also become regional. So I ran, and I, I became as a commendable number three. But then the next election, I also propped up a candidate, <laughs> uh, who is currently the member of parliament for Bokuroe, John Kagushi. Uh, because that is how it works. And also in the process, uh, I became the kingpin of the mountain. <laughs> and that is also how I also propped up Dede Nyoro to be the congressman for the School of uh, Business. This, you know Dede Nyoro, those of you are forgetting. Yeah. Member of Parliament for Kiharo. Uh, so, so these things happen uh, that way. We also propped up another young lady called uh, Marianne Jambi. She's the sec Deputy Secretary General of Kanu. And she ended up becoming the second woman Secretary General after Gladys Wanga. Uh, she is now in the private sector. Um, so, it's a long story. So in 2006, how did I join national politics? Because I think you need to know those connections. Eh? Yeah. Because that's what you're looking for. If you're in the police service, <coughs> if you're in the civil society, if you're working for, uh, you know, whatever you are doing for yourself. The issue has always been, how do you transition from being a, 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 a civil society activist, a public servant to join politics. Um, so 2006 is when I joined the Orange Democratic Movement. That time it was the biggest political party. I was the youngest member of the National Executive Committee. But how did it happen? One of the NGOs that I was working with called Leonard Chasha International, uh, they were approached because some young lady wanted to do a film on albinism, and I was recommended. And that uh, young lady happened to be none other than Lupita Nyong'o, the Hollywood uh, actress. Uh, she was 23, I was 24, and I featured in her, in her movie as an aspiring politician. So dreams are valid. <laughs> So you never know when you can meet someone who can connect you, because it is actually through her that I, I met the father who I used to admire when I was a teenager, and uh, eventually I joined the old ODM party at the neck level uh, to represent special interest groups, and out of which then later on uh, worked very hard for the party. I was supposed to be nominated to the National Assembly in 2007 at the young age of uh, 25. It didn't materialize. And then I became um, advisor to the Prime Minister at the age of 28, uh, that time Raila Odinga, and then, um, and then uh, at the age of 30, I joined Parliament. Uh, was it easy? No. When I joined the ODM party, people could not even shake my hand because they thought albinism was contagious. You know, you shake somebody and then you see them wipe subconsciously like this. In fact, one day, arms, I was actually shut down. I was told, you, where are you from? Are you from Moranga? Uh, we don't allow people like you to speak. Sit down. Such embarrassing moment. Of course, you also arrive there. You don't even know how to dress well. You look like uh, somebody from Kampka. <laughs> Wearing those funny jeans and boots and whatever. Uh, coming with the, uh, uh, to meetings uh, when your shoes have that, and people are driving into the meeting. You know, the challenge of being a young person. But then I also had my own innovations. What would I, what would I do? I would uh, take a matatu, that is public transport, for those who are not from here. Yeah. And then uh, I would then, uh, uh, near the place of the meeting, I would hire a taxi. <laughs> and then I would also get in, but majestically. Of course, after having wiped my shoes, uh, so that uh, they don't look as uh, 
<laughs> over the distance of time. Of course, you may, have, you may be a bit male because you may have worked. But you have to fake it until you... <laughs> and then now, when uh, there would be opportunities for raising questions or contributing, I would raise my hand. <coughs> and then I would be given an opportunity to speak. Then slowly but surely, people started saying, oh, this guy is brilliant. It was so much so that from someone who was not, people did not want to associate, by the time I left, I was the one reading the statements of the political party and the coalition. That is how you change the narrative. And when I got in there, there was no space for people with disabilities. I now worked with the party structures and had that in the constitution. They were supposed to come in as observers. So, so, so this, place, this, this idea that you are young and people will open doors for you, that you are a woman, that you are a person with disability, that you are not from the right region or tribe, because our politics are like that anyway, you have to stick your neck out there. Um, it's not been easy, it's not been easy. In fact, uh, uh, I, I had a dream. I had a dream that I would be the first member of parliament with albinism in this country. You know the history of albinism, how even uh, we were being killed all over in, in Kenya and Tanzania, you know, many places. But I had a dream and it came to pass. I've been the first member of parliament with albinism. I've been the first senator with albinism. I had been appointed as the first uh, chief administrative secretary for those who are not from Kenya. Is that that's a deputy minister position. It's only that the courts nullify the whole appointment. And now the first spokesman uh, of the Republic of Kenya with albinism. So it can be done, but always know that when you take the road not taken, uh, as Robert Frost does, you are carved away. Uh, there is an issue of uh, people's attitudes and perceptions, but also the issue of finances, because that is the basis upon which we are here today. You will never have enough money to run for office. I pity young people who want to join politics. Because politics, the template of politics is for an old male retiring rich <laughs> who sees it as an occupation. Yes. If you do well middle age, politics the world over favors the older male rich. That I can tell you. And if you look, those are the people who have occupied positions since the middle of the world. But I have run to be member of parliament for royal constituency twice. And I had a challenge. Because I did not want albinism to come in between myself and people because of negative attitude. First I had to choose that constituency because I had a choice of going to my rural constituency and that one. But I thought in my mind the rural folks would not be having more awareness about albinism than they, they, they are banned. I may have been right in that, but then I coined now a political name so that it makes me to connect with the people. Modongo Waruiro. <laughs> now, Modongo Waruiro means the white man of Ruiro. Now, Ruiro means black, so, so it's like the, the white man of black. Huh? <laughs> so you have to find a way of connecting people and kind of make it nice, whatever that is against that will be a standing block in your journey to do this. Uh, so when it comes to finances, I think uh, uh, you just have to start with what you The Bible tells us very clearly, Moses was asked by God, what is it? Mm -hmm. You have to start from there. Um, I remember when we were running for office arms uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Kenyatta University, I used my higher education loan, 3,000 shillings that time, to use uh, to print posters, it was my loan. <laughs> yeah, it's that. That's what I had. Yeah, like I couldn't go home and say that I was uh, going to run for office. Why? I joined university in 2002 September. Then some students with disabilities could not continue their education because allegedly some certain NGOs were raising using their names but not giving them their school fees. So we led a demonstration against that NGO. I don't know how true those allegations were, but I was in the forefront <laughs> <laughs> fighting for, <laughs> for these colleagues of mine. In fact, I was a spectacle. In the news, I appeared there shouting and leading others uh, to demonstrate. 
So I got a reprimand letter from my mother. Those days we used to write letters, not like now you get a call. And he sent some, she sent somebody to bring it to me and she said to me, I'm going to disown you as my own son. If you end up engaging in the student politics. Do you remember? So and so son died because of those kind of things. So by the time I decided to buy, I couldn't even ask for anything. In any case, she was struggling to pay for my school fees. But I used my loan, that 3,000, and uh, I got elected with a landslide at the university. Uh, so don't wait for you to have the right kind of money uh, for you to run for office. But I'm also not inviting you to just gamble because politics is extremely expensive. By the way, let me warn you, you must make it as a choice that you want to be in public service. When did I make that choice? When I was in Form 1, first year of uh, uh, secondary education. I was 14 years old. I was questioning the existence of God, and it was a very difficult moment for me. Uh, uh, and then I was it would either choose being a member of the clergy or a politician. I chose politics. <clears throat> but if you look at my life, I still ended up, of course, uh, bordering on the theology, because I've also studied theology, at least two diplomas. So you make that choice very early. However, there's a big lie out here that I need to tell you. Politics does not give you money, but it makes you look like you have money. <laughs> <laughs> it's make-believe, eh? because you are given the, the trappings of power that would otherwise accrue, if you were to do business, they would come at a very high level of investment and business acumen. So don't come into politics and public service with the idea that you're going to make millions. And I thank God for it, by the way, answer, mm -hmm. because you become too busy to become a better entrepreneur. If you want to make money, go into business. Mm -hmm. Please learn that. But there's no one single pathway into public service. There are entrepreneurs who have studied that way, and they have ended up even becoming the greatest of presidents. So, Everybody here is traveling their own journey. And your journey is not the same as Isaac Moore. I'm only here to share my experience so that it can shed light into what you are trying to pursue. You have to profile yourself very well in such a manner that you become noticeable. Let me tell you um, uh, how um, I thought of I would become famous in campus. I thought if I went around with a torn uh, t-shirt, no, the one who wears that torn t-shirt, that was my little imagination at the age of 20 years old. But you must have the hunger to stand out and be calm. 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 It doesn't matter how you do it. The most important thing is that people must talk about you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah? Politics feeds on publicity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just be there sleek. Be known for something. That is how you cut your brand. In, in, in this conversation, I hear you asking, how do you protect your brand? First, create it. Be known for something. Let the people know that if they want to talk about public finance, they will go to Abraham. And he's an authority in that regard. What authority are you in? What are you known for? What is the cause that you can live and die for? And I myself, I took it up when I was again 21, because Pierre Lumumba, some of you know him even outside the country, because I find him very popular, especially in Southern Africa, came to a university when we were students mm -hmm. and gave a public lecture. He said, you must have said that you can live and die for. Those words resonated a lot with me. Because if you, don't, if you are not passionate about anything, anything goes. And you know Mahatma Gandhi talks about one of the seven sins of modern day life is politics without principle. Be known for something, then you can defend it. I am here because Dr. Rugo thinks that I have kept my faith. And many people may think so. Be known for something. The challenge of our uh, latter day uh, young aspirants and politicians is that they are looking for the glamour and the fame. But what are you known for? What is behind you? Because if you have no th those values, it is not going to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. I have been in the National Assembly. It may not be what you see, 
And in the quest to be known, sometimes we caricature ourselves as people who have no brains. Actually, people generally think politicians don't have brains. It's because they are trying to connect with the bottom of the pyramid. So we must act and be like them. But the, it takes a lot of uh, uh, intelligence and thinking for you to come up with, uh, with things that can connect with, you, with the people. When you come into politics, then you start appreciating why then certain things appear the way they are. They are grotesque, but you are playing to the public already. So identify a cause. Is it about women issues? Is it about, is it about uh, youth rights? Is it about uh, climate change? Is it about environment? Is it about your own region and the, the issues that people stand for? Is it a, you know, you have to have a brand that you are known for, that everybody will come to you for it. But then, to sustain that, then you have to have values. You have to have principles. So for me, at the age of 22, I chose the course of disability. I chose the course of disability. I said, this is the one thing I can fight for. And then later on, I, I, uh, because of issues of albinism, then I zeroed in on that one. But then it's not just also about being a women's rights activist. Every time you open your mouth, it's about disability. You must also self-improve. And that is why, after finishing, when I was still at the university, I also did a course in uh, the one I told you because I wanted to you know, quench my hunger for, 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 the, for the clergy. I did two diplomas in theological education. And then when I finished the university, uh, I also did another, you know, a, 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 a diploma in public relations and communication. And then, um, because of working with another international foundation, Conrad uh, our Stiftung, just like you have Future Elect, uh, they gave me a scholarship uh, together with the World Council of Churches. I went to study um, uh, uh, Development Studies Masters at the Nelson Mandela University in Port Elizabeth. So the people of um, South Africa, I'm a author. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to understand the issue of development. So I was there, 2010, uh, and then in that same year, I became the best um, uh, in Kenya, the Ford International Fellowship uh, Program. I got a scholarship to go and study abroad. I had been admitted to several universities, including uh, John F. Kennedy's uh, School of Government. But then I had a three-year strategic plan that I had written in 2008 for 20, 2009 to 2012. So personal strategic plans. This strategic plan <clears throat> had some, some of the key highlights, because there are many, is that one, I wanted to be in a relationship that can lead to marriage. <laughs> I didn't say that I wanted to get married. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I wanted uh, to own my first car and make my first million. Uh, number three, I wanted to be in parliament by 2012. Mm -hmm. I made it in 2000. Take it from me. I was able to achieve all of that. I made my first million. I, I met the one who is currently my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Mokami, your friend. And uh, also, the elections were moved to 2013 March, but in that election, I was nominated to the National Assembly by my party. So planning is very critical in your journey. Things don't just happen. The sun does not just rise. So you have to also plan. And that's the reason why I didn't go to the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, because it would be an, have been a two-year program. And I knew my time to join parliament was the next election. So I, I didn't want to miss my season. So you have to know your season. You know, Amst keeps on saying that I am a man of nine lives. <laughs> In fact, uh, <laughs> the moment I became spokesman, they say that on Citizen, that this is a, a, a man with a, a, a nine lives like that of a cat. <laughs> Politics, without God, by the way, it's not about human intelligence. And also because God has given us an opportunity to also make choices and also time and chance are given to them all. Timing is everything in politics. <laughs> timing, timing. Know the seasons and the times. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be quite unpopular. <clears throat> the moment I decided to support Raila Odinga, it was an antithesis. It's on them in the region that I come from. I was called a traitor. In fact, one day I was called and I was told I was, be, I was going to be beheaded in the heat of the 2007 post-election violence. 
again when I decided to join Uhuru Kenyatta, I was really vilified and uh, character assassination is the highest order. Again, when I also made a public announcement that I'm supporting William Ruto, I was even removed from the Senate. <laughs> For seven good months, I was in court over 30 times, seven cases. I went through hell. They sent drones to my house. I was given a travel ban not to go anywhere internationally. They, I was in the, in the SSU death squad list. It was a difficult moment. But today, I stand vindicated. William Ruto became president. So you, you, must, you must be ready to also to, to know how you align yourself politically. Don't just follow the, 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 the people. The, you must know against uh, passions and persuasions. Know, time your race, and associate properly. Because politics is about an alliance, even for public service. I, I consider myself very privileged that I, I am serving as a government spokesman. And when I look at my salary, allow me to say so, honestly, then I ask myself, what is so special about me that somebody could also not earn what I'm earning? Not that it's a lot of money, but certainly there are people who are earning maybe your salary is like 30 times of that person. They may never have that kind of money in their lifetime. And we must be grateful, good people, when God has given you a chance. So what makes people to think that then you have of more value than the other person who has got their two ears, two nostrils, one mouth, walking like you. What makes you so special? But then you, 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 your value is higher than therefore you are compensated for it. Ask yourself. Because we are all human here. There is nothing special between me and dance. We are, we are standing here because maybe we are done standing with our lives. So also, you have also been identified amongst so many people to come here for future elections. So that means you have something that you can work on. Keep on improving on it. And it's not easy. Because you have to have internal conversations with yourselves and find resonance. Because the world tends to kind of tear us apart so that we lose focus. Then there are competitors, people who will put doubt in you so that then you don't believe in your, in your scores. Stand and be strong and follow your dream. I don't know whether the world is, is creating people to be resilient. By the way, if you are coming into the space of politics and public life, it is bare knuckle politics. Bare knuckle politics. Uh -huh. It's like going to a mutura joint with a fork and knife <laughs> when people are using hands. With your good manners, you may not make it. <laughs> yeah. So. There's something I'm saying that I'm not saying. Yeah. Unachora ikitu bana. Okay? Unachora? Unachora ikitu. Interpret to the next message. You must plan and be strategic. And you must have that knack of being ahead of the pack. Yeah, it doesn't come that easy. People may undermine you, but don't undermine yourself. Are we together? Yeah. Now, what are the mistakes that people make uh, finance, uh, for financial? Then I come to the issue of media relations. Um, and then uh, we can move to the next level. Because then it's also good to be interactive. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, first and foremost, um, people think that when you go join the public service, that you are going to have loads and loads of money. And in a way it is true, because you'll be compensated well, you'll have a vehicle, but it's only when you're in that space. I have lost elections, so I know what it means to lose elections. And by the way, be prepared that you are going to lose elections. There are very few people who are lucky that every time they contest, they what? Hey, hey, hey. One of them is William Samoy Ruto. <laughs> He's never lost any election at a personal level, but he has been in the, on the losing side like when we didn't win in 2007, ODM, ODM isn't it? Mm -hmm. But he was still the member of parliament for Eldoret. Mm -hmm. You get the point, eh? Mm -hmm. The other one who knows how to time that well is uh, Moses Wetangula. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even when he loses, when others are mourning, he's a senator. So he's time. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a core principal, but eventually when Raila is not anywhere, he is a senate minority leader. <laughs> <laughs> so also know how to, 
You get the point, eh? Yeah. yeah. I have a story and I need to be proud of it. I have never been elected by the people directly, but I have served in two parliaments. Yes! 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 If you get through the window and you get through the door, the most important thing yeah. I need to gather my people. These position of government spokesmen, by the way, they came for me, and I'm not being proud. They are the ones who said we needed somebody, and they naturally agreed. God worked in their minds, and they said the only person who can fill this job is Isaac Moore. And there were 6,000 people who wanted this job. Mm. When I was in ODM, Uhuru Kenyatta, then president, I went into a debate on TV with Moses Kuria, the current minister for public service. I ran on him so seriously but, that he walked out of the show. <laughs> And then when they were watching uh, 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 it at State House, because the media station was owned by the president's family, they said, what, the, what has this command won, this Kaudian man? And they started strategizing how they would woo me from that side to their party. That's what happened. That's what happened. That is how, see, we are, we are being candid and practical. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is how my wedding is the only one that has ever had a photo shoot with the president at State House. In the <laughs> It was part of the who? <laughs> How that value, my friend. <laughs> Don't walk around making people feel like they owe you. Who wants a desperado? Make yourself indispensable. Make yourself count for something. That is the way people will make. You know, the Bible says, your gift will open doors for you in high. Are we to my, 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 my young people? Yeah, so, so that then you are properly positioned. Now, for, for finances, let me come back to that. And arms is especially some public finance. So you are in a, it's like you are in a hotel room, like the way we are here. So food will be served, you will have a nice bed and water view, and if people ask where you are, oh, I'm in this and that hotel. Will they not respect you? Mm -hmm. But when you get out of that hotel, you may even walk home, right? <laughs> <laughs> then you will not even have the, the five course meal that you're having here. Yeah. You know when you're in civil society, you get to be in your hotel so many times. Right? But that's how they build your capacity and you are. Because I also went through the same. So that's also what happened in political life. You get in and it's this. So many people then are not able to invest. Then they live in the glory of the moment. Mm -hmm. And because you are called honorable, then you spend. And then by the time you're done, you've also seen stories of those who have left who are paupers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because Politics is the business of giving, especially in Africa. You keep on giving. Yeah. So what you do is you, you must invest. I was in, with colleagues in Parliament who, by the time we left, they didn't have houses. Yes, there's a mortgage facility for you to own a house. And yes, they went and bought very huge fuel guzzlers uh, moving around. By the time that we were done, they were trying to sell those vehicles at a throwaway price. So the financial decisions that you make and how you invest is very important. You will never have enough money to finance your lifestyle, but most poignantly, you will never have enough money to feed a whole village. Nobody has. By the time you are done, you'll, you'll be a pauper. There are three things in politics. You either win, you become poor, or you die. Please listen. Politics is not for the faint-hearted. Politics is the informal that constitutes the formal. <laughs> Are we together? Mm -hmm. It is the art of the possible to organize society. I knew, for example, it would be difficult for me as a trailblazer to be elected at the ballot, but I tried. That inspired some people that I had employed in my office who I used to mentor. One of them now is a member of parliament for a year. You think you see, you see him dressing like, like me? Yeah, Pepe. Pepe, yes. That's, I am the one who gave him uh, his first job when he was staying here in Kangeme, in the slum. He came crying. He even failed in the interview. But I mentored him. You must also have people who take after your course. So that whatever you're not able to achieve, others can achieve. But then you are the role model for them to follow. Are we together? Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. So invest. But also, Moderate your expectations. Moderate your expectations. Because if you come to politics thinking that you are going to be a billionaire out of public funds, you can only be corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can only be 
correct. Moderate your expectations. In any case, um, I must address this because I have an opportunity. Yeah. Recently, the Star newspaper, which I write for every Friday, even today you see I, I run a column, a column there, there, there was a headline about uh, families that were fighting for billions after their patriarchs had died. I don't, I, I don't know the sound of you saw that. In that, uh, there were six photos or portraits of the whoever families. Two of them are former presidents. Yeah? Mm -hmm. One of them is John Michuki. So there was Daniel Moy, there was Mwai Kibaki, the second and third president, uh, John Michuki, uh, blah, blah, you, you can name them. I, I know this may, this may be a bit controversial, but what is it about life? Does anybody die to leave their family fighting for whatever he worked so hard to get? Mm -hmm. So moderate your expectations in terms of how much then you can accumulate. Because the challenge of our politics is primitive accumulation. Where you have $90 billionaires against 50 million uh, paupers. Of what, of what benefit is that? And because I participated uh, in the last campaigns, I can tell you, when the people are with you and the systems are working, you have great leaders elected. That is even how Barack Obama won elections, uh, being fundraised for by students who could give their you know, loans money. So the same case for you. You need a, a certain amount of money. But if you are a good candidate, you spend much less, by the way. So 50% of winning is being a good candidate. Money plays a role. Don't be lied to. And then when there are no proper systems, kuna ukora is out of all. And by the way, um, I am here to tell you the truth. In your journey of joining politics and public service, you will find uh, tricksters, con men, and fraudsters. <laughs> Yeah? Who make it easier because they have no values, they have no scruples. Will you be able to stand with your values, my brother and my sister? Because any society the world over was changed by men and women of valor and candor who made difficult situations, decisions when it was popular to do the other way around. Be inspired. For example, I ran for member of parliament for women. I was the one who had even popularized the UDA party because it was a new political party. Here we form parties every election, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I formed it. In fact, that's part of the reason why I was being thrown out of the Senate. I registered the first members. I opened two offices and what have you. But you know what? When the crooks of the matter came, my opponent knew that I was going to beat him. So he came up with a rigging strategy. In fact, you are told in politics, either you rig or you are rigged out. No. You are either rig or you stop your opponent from really? reading. So I had the challenge because one, I'm the one who introduced the party. My opponent came too late. He was an incumbent member of parliament. But for me now, there are two things I was toying with. I have to be a candidate, but I, must, um, I have also to be a board because I am the one who has created this, uh, created this part, party. So I must also be impartial. But then that's what I did. At some point, my people came and told me, we must also steal. And we started devising on how to <laughs> But then at some point we had a meeting. It was actually a long form. I said, is this right? We, we are the ones who kind of owned the party. Because I'm the one who introduced it. Is this right? We had a phone call on the eve of the elections. And we all agreed and said it was not right. And at that point, my dear brother, my dear sister, I knew I had lost the election. True to it, the following days, the ridicule, the name calling, the trolling mm -hmm. that came was palpable. Some of you who are Kenyans here, you remember how I was training uh, in a katakatia at school. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, most of the time, when I used to go to people's houses, because you have to, you know, the things you do for you to win a election. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you watch people, sure, I don't want you. You know, a connection, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and by the way, the people from South Africa go uh, go and say hi to Mabayon Zikwankwa, he's my friend. Uh, he's a member of parliament. He's my good friend, he's a good guy. So, the, 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 I used to do more preaching, by the way, arms in those houses. Eh? I was sharing the word of God. I call it political evangelism. Because I have to the greatest campaign is to go to heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you have to have value systems. Are they based on faith? Okay. Are they based on your human rights credentials? What is it that gives you that tenacity to keep on fighting? It has to be something higher 
than just belonging to a political party or just wanting to run for office. Mm. Where do you draw your values from? And I am very happy because Future Elect has got a certain set of value system that then they are trying to inculcate in all of us here so that we, we abide by it. Um, on issues of media relations, um, there is a challenge there. Uh, but then st the, the good thing is that now the, the, the media space has been, the franchise has been democratized. Yeah, yeah? we have uh, social media accounts. <coughs> so before, we used to have like one radio station, SABC, Kenya Broadcasting Corporation or UBC, name them. But today, your own Twitter X account is a whole station. You, you'll be having more followers than uh, certain TV stations. So build your brand on social media. Don't be lied to by anybody. Build your brand there. Let people know how you think. I ran something called Isaac Mora Speaks. It has a lot of followers, by the way. Small nuggets of wisdom. Writing. They may not even get a lot of comments, but build a profile. Engage also with the media, because politics is about perception. Please take note of what I'm saying now. Politics is about perception. Politics is about perception, but perception and perception, not even that, and perception is a production of communication. And like the whole like, idea of politics is how you communicate. It's about how people perceive who you are. And any publicity is good publicity. Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, people will remember the name of the ballot. Mm -hmm. You get the point? Mm -hmm. I'm being very practical here because I've been in politics now since 2006. Those are how many years? 18 years. So I know something. I basically know something. And by the way, you see somebody being there, just know that it doesn't just happen. Yeah, they did something to be there. So please, cut your niche. The media is very, uh, anyway, let me not say anything about the media. <laughs> <laughs> they are my first clients. This thing is live here. <laughs> But have good relations with them. Yeah. You cannot win the war on the media very easily. By the way. Yeah. Yeah. So just have good relations with them. The good thing is that you can trend, you can whatever, you know. Uh, but constantly let people know. And how do you then maintain that? By consistency. That's what I hear when people ask me about this. You have been consistent on this matter. Mm -hmm. then, then, then you develop a, a brand. <coughs> yeah. and, 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 and sometimes when you make those difficult decisions, they come at a very high price. But there's a God in heaven who sees. Mm. So when I refused to read myself in, but eventually I was appointed CAS and eventually I was appointed um, a government spokesman. Let, let, me, let me teach you some things that may be controversial. And please, uh, Natasha, allow me to be as real as possible. Yes, yes, because if I don't, then I'll be lying to these young people. Yes, um, on matters communication, we are now in media relations. You either communicate uh, on three areas. This is my observation of politics. This is uh, my own authority. It is not uh, adulterated. It's not from anywhere else. So if you hear somebody else saying that, just know they learned from Maura. Yeah. Because Africans are never quoted a lot as authorities. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we don't write as much. Yeah. I'm saying that as somebody who went to the school of University of Leeds in England. So <coughs> I, I, I know that. We give, we give a lot of authorities that are not, that are not uh, from Africa. So you either communicate with the head the heart and the stomach. The head, the heart, and the stomach, or the stomach. For the head, it, uh, it, uh, it appeals to cognition and reasoning and thinking. I think it's only 2% of the adults of those people. It's difficult. The middle class are here. They ask very too many difficult questions. But in particular, this tends to favor men. Mm. Eh? So when you, are, when you are looking for vote, or men tend to go with you this way. Because men communicate either to explain or to give instructions. Mm. Are, you, are you getting me? Mm. Yeah. Then the heart is about emotions, connection with the people. Oh, this is a poor uh, you know, peasant who rose to fame, you know, that kind of thing. The heart, the emotions. Who are the majority here? Women. Women. 
there will be theory, oh, that is our son, oh, I don't know. Please know, this is the biggest constituency, the most loyal. <laughs> because when they promise you, they keep it. It's true. For men, they can calculate. <laughs> and then there's the stomach. <laughs> the stomach is about the youth. <laughs> How much are you? <laughs> are you getting? So they will go with you without even knowing which direction, but they are telling you, let's move, let's move. By the way, if you rely on the youth vote, eh, you are likely to have done it twice. Yeah, it's very unreliable. <laughs> um, when I was running for MP at 35 years in Ruiru, the first time, I branded myself as a youth candidate. In fact, I was, we were three, we were three candidates. Uh, so one older man, and then the woman who was member of parliament then, and myself. So I was the youngest, I, I didn't have money and what have you. Uh, so what did I do? I had uh, Vijana Namwaura, young man, eh? and then Warebo Namwaura. Uh, arms add me two moments. And then, <laughs> and then, so in my thinking, I was so passionate about bringing the vote of the young women into, to matter in politics. But did you know what? <clears throat> that intimidated the older women because it's like you are telling them they are not as beautiful <laughs> enough. And then my idea was that these young women have also boyfriends and friends to who they can bring votes. <laughs> these workers, in fact, most of them do not show up to vote. Then the old, the 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 the, the, the young men, eh? the young men now, they will go with you. Then you eventually realize they don't even have voting cards. They don't even have national identity. But they are the ones who really fight for you and shout there. So know how to use those publics for you. But for women, they will own you, they will wear their lessons, they will come up to vote. Mm -hmm. The men also, but not as many. So also when you're doing your demographics on how, have messages at target. But remember in the end, everybody has a head, a heart, and a stomach. Politics is about distribution of resources. So after you have spoken all that nice English like Maura, how much are we getting? getting? What are we taking home? What are you bringing to us? Are you believable? Are, you, are we together? So we must connect with you. We must make reason so that you don't so, sound like a, a joker like uh, Wajakoya who was running to be president and telling us that, uh, you know, I was reading his manifesto. Let me read for you if you, are, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, you make these things maybe to have people laugh and also to create a name. But be careful so that people don't take you as a joker. Eh? There, is a, there, is a, there is a very thin line there, by the way. Eh? You must also be taken more seriously much as you may want to. Let me read for you some of the manifesto of our presidential candidate, the one before last election. And please, if you supported him, I, I have no ill will against you. I'm just trying to be practical on the lessons that we have. Then I say one more thing, and then uh, we are done. Um, I hope uh, my phone does not embarrass me by being slow. You guys have faster phones. <laughs> So yeah, so you, you have to you have to have um, you have to have uh, that that idea that you must map out, uh, you must know which constituency you are running for, what are their perceptions, for example, uh, uh, um, on women, things like those, because it's harder for you. Are you in the right place? Are you those all those factors? But you must still be ready to stick your neck out because it will never be conducive enough for you to. So Professor Wajakoya, who I used to debate with him on TV before. He wanted to legalize marijuana, introduce snake farming, export dog meat, harm all the corrupt, shut down the started gauge railway, Kenyans to have only four working days in a, in a week, four Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be holidays, <laughs> Kenyans to be paid every two weeks, um, and then suspend the constitution, people will be asked what they want, and uh, shift the capital city to, uh, from Nairobi to Isiolo, <laughs> and create eight new states, each state to have a federal government, and deport all idle foreigners. <laughs> that is your presidential candidate. So do, would you vote for somebody? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so know the limits, eh? Don't, don't become another uh, caricature just because you want to make up. And in fact, what I have seen, you can start that way, but then now bring the other side of view you, eh? just to create attention. I'm being practical here. Now finally, loyalty. Please take note of the following. 
statement. The currency of politics is loyalty. The currency of politics is loyalty. And of course, Isaac Mora, 2024. Loyalty to who? Hold your thought there. The currency of politics is? The second statement. Business is about transactions. Business is about transactions. The business of politics is a transaction of relationships. The business of politics is a transaction of relationships. You can have either two people, one who is relational, and the other one is transaction. So just note that. Coming to your question, my friend, loyal to who? Relationships. Relationships. The word there is to relate, right? How do you relate to your party? How do you relate to the people? How do you relate to your conscience and your values? Loyalty. And because we are in Kenya, we are in Africa, how are you loyal to your political party? How are you loyal to your party leader? That is very important. Loyalty to who? Loyalty to the cause of an individual. You rise and fall with your fortunes. Very important. You have to have a mentor, somebody who holds your hand or somebody you look up to. Be consistent. Loyalty is rewarded more than any other thing. It's beyond actually um, uh, qualifications. There are five levels of loyalty. Again, this is my own uh, observation. You will not read it elsewhere, and if you read it, just know it's attributed to Isaac Moore. <laughs> Number one. There are five types of loyalty. Number one is money. Money. Those with money have a way with politics. Because at some point, money is very important. So when you have money, you can make way. Because you can actually buy people's uh, support through money. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. I didn't come here to sugarcoat you. You can discuss me after I've left, but I'm mm. <laughs> The second one is sexual relationships. Hello? Hello. Sexual? Relationship. I am born again Christian. I leave it at that. Is this still loyalty? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a form of loyalty. You are loyal. Yeah. 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 If you know, you know. Number three <laughs> is expertise so you deploy your expertise as a form of loyalty how does it work if you are known to be a good mobilizer because you are youth it will count for something mm. because it will come for you to mobilize for them the crowd because any politician wants a self-mobilized crowd that's why we go to churches and to marketplaces to sell our policies but then if you are the one mobilizing you'll be the favorite then you use that to negotiate for your seat that youth sit in the party or whatever structures will come to you because you are a good youth mobilizer. In fact, most of you here will tell me you are not as good mobilizer. It could be also because you are the lawyer in town, so you write those legal documents. It could be the fact that you are a very good orator. So therefore you will speak on TV and radios and people will see that this is articulating our agenda. So know where you have your expertise from. It ranges from mobilization all the way to being uh, uh, whatever uh, you know, specialization of your profession can be. Number four, uh, family relations. People are loyal to their families, right? Mm -hmm. That's why there's some problem. We call it nepotism. Uh, somebody will say, even the Bible says, you start from Jerusalem before you go to Samaria and to there. Mm -hmm. That comes. Family relations. That's why you have issues like dynasties and whatever. It's a form of loyalty. People are loyal to their family. Then number five, social networks. Very important. I am here because Arms and I went to the same school. If you ever told me you went to Kenyatta University, even without me asking, I feel already attached to you. It's true. 
I'll even give you a job. I want to hear more. Because you may have slept the same bed that I did. Social network. The high school you went to, the people you fraternize with, social networks are very, very important. The issue of family may go all the way even to tribe. You understand? Eh? Because family is a basic social unit. Why do you vote for Isaac Mora? Because he comes from the mountain region. Because he's from your tribe, it's part of the bigger family. So those are things you need to put in mind. When you have no money, because most of the time young people don't have money, please have a skill, have some expertise, have something that people will come to you for. Mm -hmm. Madam Inspector, you want to be a... Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Doctor, yeah, doctor. Yeah, have, if it is, then organize those medical camps. Mm -hmm. Let them know that for community and public health, they are coming for you. But just use it as an example. If you are an inspector, then provide security mm -hmm. so that we cannot be vandalized by the goons. Because there is an official security on the other one. <laughs> My good people, I don't want to go beyond that. Yes, yes. But I believe that I have shared with you. Practical <laughs> examples of how to make it. It's not easy, but where there is a will, yes, there is a will. For the success of the future does not lie in the mere passing of time. For the arrival of tomorrow, but in the little dosages of change that you make here. Right now. When you are getting into this leadership space, just come to make a difference. I have made a difference. I, for example, have been able to push for government to be giving free sunscreen lotions to persons with benefit. It was not existing before. Mm -hmm. I was able to push for the National Youth Service and parliamentary uh, training to accommodate uh, youth with disabilities. Now they're even joining prisons as cadets and what have you. I've been able to make the Kenyan currency to be more friendly to those who are visually impaired. I've been able to help push quite a number of people with disabilities to, into high office. Yeah? I have been able to, uh, for example, uh, create a, a, a national you know, conversation on certain topics that were taboo before. Yeah? I have been able, for example, to ensure that a whole uh, you know, uh, um, section within a Ministry of Education was raised to become a whole director of special needs education. Increase funding to those uh, programs of people. You can make a difference. I'm just saying that because it is the course that I took when I was 22 and PLO spoke to us. Don't come into this space just because you want to be. It's vain. It's unhealthy. And there are many wannabes, fake people, who are occupying various hallowed positions. Fight for it. Don't think because you are good, people will notice. That's why you don't understand my. Um, before you use you can interpret again to the land. <laughs> Don't just imagine that the world will open its doors just because you are this do gooder. In fact, good men, and I want to say even women, finish last. <laughs> Read the book or the story of uh, William Wilberforce. How he fought very hard for the end of slavery in, uh, in, in the UK. It took years. By the way, it takes about 20 years to resolve a problem, minimum. I have proven that. Yeah, the stigma and discrimination that we used to face of people with albinism 20 years ago has really subsided because then people can relate to us. So don't think that you just appear and it happens. <coughs> it's a long shot. You'll be groping in the, in the dark. You may not have it all figured out. Keep marching. There is no perfect moment. You have what it takes. You are the present and the future. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good. I hope that has been worth your time. Uh, yeah, uh, he's gone beyond the finances, uh, but he's spoken to a lot of that. Um, and and uh, I have no intentions of um, you know trying to recap what he has said. Uh, I, will, I will leave that to you. But before I open it up, allow me to say two things. One is that it's only a fool who tests the depth of a river with both their feet. I repeat. Only a fool tests the depth of a river with both their feet. Because mm. what happens if it is deep? It's swept it's swept away. They are swept away. Mm -hmm. So take one step at a time. Don't jump in simply because the ground has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I come from Nakuru County and I don't entertain those ground speaking things. Mm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I retired from politics after I lost the presidential race then. And I found a new line. And as Moura is saying, I have become the authority in that space. <laughs> you know, uh, having not studied economics, 
uh, I studied physics and mathematics, but I think in economic conversations in Kenya, chances are that I am involved somewhere, uh, if not at the front. But that has been how many years? From 2005, when I did my last exam as a teacher and did my teaching practice, August of 2005 and I moved into a new space. So don't test the depth of a river. Don't go in with all your resources. For those of you, I know there are some of you here who are actually going into active public service. Again, even there, take calculated risks, but give it your best. But don't jump in all, because a lot of young people that I have interacted <coughs> with thought they were too popular, they were, they were, you know, the world could not do without them. And today, they are depressed, whether in business, some of you have been perhaps there, they are completely depressed because they were shocked how the world was harsh and ruthless. So take one step at a time. And in many, many ways, respect the process. Respecting the process does not mean you stay lazy and lay back and wait for there to be picked <laughs> and helped. I'm one person who I really entertain the conversation of let's give them a chance because they are young or because they are women or because they are, they, are, they are disadvantaged in one way or another. I want to see, yes, you are young, but what are you offering? So that, that's my first point. Do not test the depth of a river with both your feet. Take one step at a time. Nothing is wrong with you even volunteering in a political party. Nobody said you must buy the first time. Who knows? You might just find ways in which um, you will. But secondly, finances, which are the big currency of any, I mean, of most progress that we want to achieve. Nobody starts with finances at the beginning, unless you are coming from a very powerful family where everything. If you are like me, most of us, our ambitions are still in the future. Hello? Mm -hmm. Yeah, our ambitions are still in the future. So you don't have all the resources. So the question is, as you build, how do you ensure that if things don't work out? And one challenge I have, uh, you know, I, I have for everyone is don't mix money for politics and money for life. Don't mix money for politics and money for life. Money for life is money you need to eat, to eat. money you need to feed your family. Money that you need to take your children to school. Because there are politicians who once they have been swept after an election, have been swept completely. I was talking to a friend of mine who sold, almost sold almost nearly even the, the family home. Because it, at the heat of the campaigns, and more I, I think I was going to ask you that, mm -hmm. at the heat of the campaign is where two-thirds of the campaign money is spent. I think in the last four days. Uh, the last one week, and I think the last day takes half the campaign money you know, uh, in some cases. Because you have to pay all those agents, you have to, you know, and this one you're facilitating people to actually do work uh, uh, for that. But some people have gone in, taken loans, sold family property. Uh, a friend of mine, the wife was very clever. So she listened to the guy who wanted to buy and said, I, I, I agree with you, you must go for this. But here is the deal. So he told her, this is a bank account I'm giving you. Go and deposit money for us that we are going to spend. Out of all the money that you have collected and you have for campaigns, take money that is going to sustain us for another six months after the elections. Once you've deposited all that money there, go do your thing. The guy, of course, was angry. He was like, yeah, you know, I wasn't using this money to be spent at home. But when he lost, because he lost and lost a good one, he tells me he, was, he, he respected his wife at a different level because he had a place to sleep. He had food to eat. As much as he was being chased by a few guys, he had borrowed money. Nobody was coming to attach family property. Another practical thing that you can do, including changing those of you who are married, even what property, <laughs> in whose name it is. Not practical things. So that then you don't have people coming to sweep you off. You've attached your car, you've attached your, you know, your, 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 your land, you've attached everything. And therefore, when one thing is swept, everything is swept away. Remember there is life, you know, as, as you do this. 
So I'll stop it there. I want to open it up. Please, uh, questions, comments, thoughts. Uh, we have another 40 or so minutes. I will try and maximize this. If you can keep your comment or your question at the brief, please uh, more. If you can keep your notebook. I'm sure guys want to hear more. Uh, so I'll start. I'll start with you. Don't mind if I've forgotten your name, but just say it again. Uh, 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 let, let's speak the first like three, four. Uh, so uh, the lady, uh, the gentleman in checked. Uh, are you lifting your hand? I'm not too sure. So the gentleman, this gentleman, and then the lady again. Uh, let's start. So thank you, Dr. for the presentation. By the way, I'm also a cast scholar like you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So one point.